name is Christian Klausner, also from Southwood University, as Stefan before. And yeah, basically it's what you expect from a repository, so you can, uh, yeah, that's good. So you have an overview, first of all, with uh, the introduction and some statistics here, how many images there are. As you can see, it's not that many yet, so it's of course work in progress. And uh, page files is what we, what Stefan mentioned before, the ground proof, which is also just a few test pages so far. So, and then uh, some not so interesting details, and uh, also browsing usage data. So, the, how to browse the data set is uh, straightforward. So, we have a selection by institution, so all the libraries which provided images or you can just browse all images or some specific working sets which were defined for some specific tasks basically. And yeah, when you browse it's basically sorted by uh, title and you see thumbnails as you expect and you can open them, see click on thumbnails, <coughs> from here you can also then download the content basically the original image, or if there are attachments, such as the ground group, or in this case also some original JPEG files, and you can also download that from here, and see the, the links. And of course you also have some uh, metadata on the bottom, so basically everything that was provided, you can browse from here. And on the top right, as you can see, if you find a problem somewhere in the dataset, you can also report it immediately to us, and then Let's say the image is broken, or the, the ground proof is, is wrong, or something you can report from here. And yeah, apart from just browsing, you can of course also search dataset. Basically, using all the metadata that is available, you can select what you want. You can also select that if you want specific attachments. For instance, if you want only pages where uh, uh, the ground proof is available, you can select that. You can select the image sets and the image type and the language, and script, and so on. Or if you know already what you want, a specific image, you can just jump there if you have the ID. Um, yeah. What we also have, as Stefan didn't mention it before, is an interactive viewer for the ground group. So basically supported by most of the browsers, I think. And yeah, so you see the ground proof as an overlay on the image. You can zoom in and scroll through, select something, you see the full text, and uh, you see the, the attributes of the region and so on. So it's quite, quite useful. And also, if you want uh, just to browse through and select a few images to download later, we have this uh, card functionality. So you can just uh, something to a card by using this small icon and then if you go then to, to your card you see all the images you selected and you can download them in one go and download the attachments in one go and so on. Yeah, so it was it already. Then I shall come to the Alithia tool, what Stefan mentioned before. So this is uh, for ground proof production, but also to browse results, which were, for instance, uh, generated by FineReader. So that's what I want to show you first. So we have this newspaper, so we have some basic functionality, of course, soon. So you can see the full page or as soon as you want. And, yeah. The, yeah, I just want to show the details now, but I think we can skip that. So if you go to regions, you see all the regions that the fine reader produced now, in this case. So they were exported through a tool we provide, but you can also actually open the Alto, the Alto file directly. And yeah, basically you can just select things, see all the details, the attributes which were defined, in this case there's not much, and yeah, you can also uh, switch to uh, text lines in this case, 
and birds and even glyphs. So, and uh, for grunt of creation now, you could start from that, from this result, and find what is wrong and then just correct it. For instance, here in this case, there's a strange background image which would have to be corrected, or all this stuff on the, on the left you could just delete, and then there are tools to split regions or merge regions which are wrong. So basically from that is one way to create the ground truth as you want it, and the same, yeah. Um, yes. So but what I want to show you specifically is how to create a ground truth from scratch, so from an empty image basically. So I'm just going to select an image now. Okay, so it asks you already if you have a black and white image, in this case we don't have one. And for that, we also integrated because the black and white image is useful also in this tool for many semi-automated features. So it makes sense to quickly create one, and that's why I, uh, we integrated this binarization, for instance, right directly into Alithia. You, you don't have to basically open an image tool, do the binarization, load the image into Alithia, you can just do it from here. It's a different tool, so I just use a simple one which gets the threshold automatically. And this takes a little bit because it also does in the background uh, connected components analysis. So, yeah. <laughs> so. so that's uh, quite uh, good already. But as you can see, or maybe not see from the back, is uh, there's a little bit of noise and it can actually be a bit confusing later the tools. So uh, I want to show you how to maybe remove a bit of that. So we have integrated some uh, pepper noise removal tools from this one. So it just removes small spots from somewhere, as you can hopefully see in a little bit. And uh, that usually improves the added performance of the, the tools. So as you can see, some of the noise is now gone, a few is left. So for that, we have some manual tools basically. So you just select what you want to remove like that, and then you can just delete it and it's gone. Yeah. So from that, you can, uh, in theory, continue and now actually start doing things and create regions. So we integrate some semi-automated tools, which uh, makes it much faster to create regions with a precise outline also, not just a rectangle or something. So you can either use this course contours, which is selected and just quickly say where the region is roughly, and then for you it shrinks it down to the actual outlines. And yeah, let's do this for a few. So if you need a bit more smooth outline, you can just select the fine contour tool from here. Basically the same, just it goes a bit more closer to the actual content foreground. So let's just quickly do this region as well. So I'm not doing all regions, don't worry. So now I have a few examples. So as you can see, it already attached the region type here, in this case paragraph. Also for this one, if you zoom in. But Obviously, that is wrong for this case because it's a separator. So, just it's a bit narrow here. Yeah, for that, you can just select, or you can also select multiple regions at once and then just say it's a separator. Where is it here? Yeah, and it also changes colors, so all the regions are color coded to make it easier to spot. And yeah. Let's say that's it for the regions now. Of course, you can now also uh, start 
changing the metadata, for instance, yeah, we, maybe we can do that, it's actually a headline and not a paragraph, so we can change the subtype, headline, heading, okay, yeah. Okay, so, now if you need it, some work, uh, in some workflows you don't, but often we, to evaluate, need also the text lines, then you can switch text lines tab in the ribbon bar and you can already see the outlines now a bit grey or black from the regions we just did and now it's basically straightforward you can just select in this case it's only one so you just create one if you have two it's also quite easy you can just split them with this quick proof just shows you already a line where it would split and even if you touch a little bit of a cliff, it's not a problem, it will split around. <coughs> so it's quite big, so that's it already. And the same, it just show quickly, uh, is true for, for words. So you don't actually have to create one now, you can just click in the middle, white spaces, and it will create words for you. And yeah, it's actually quite straightforward and, and quick, and yeah, we got actually good feedback from service providers is quite useful. And yeah. So uh, quickly go back to the regions. What Stefan mentioned before with the reading order. Now it's uh, of course only a very small example here, but I quickly show you how it would no, sorry, wrong one. How it would work. So reading what I mentioned, you can have groups or complex layouts. So it always says one group first, but you can just create groups and subgroups and you can say if they are sorted or not, you can say ordered or not ordered. And then, yeah, to just assign something, just select a group and then you can just click on the region and it already shows you all the arrows in the, on the image, basically. But we will see actually more complex uh, examples later when we do the evaluation part. Yeah, that's the reading order. And layers, <coughs> I don't want to create layers now, but it's basically the same. You can create uh, layers, attach regions, and then you can also use drag and drop in the tree here. Same for reading order, quickly reassign things which are wrong, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is that? So, for the actual text content, so that was just the outline now and the attributes. To enter the text, you can just, as Stefan showed before, open this dialog. It's also resizable. You can adjust it to the actual width of the, of the regions you're working on. And then, yeah, I can just type, it's normal, and Let's type for words, we'll show you something later. And then you can just quickly, either by a key or by this button, just jump to the next and continue typing so you don't have to click anywhere, just go for all the regions and done. And yeah, some additional features, as Stefan mentioned, are this, this virtual keyboard on the bottom, so it's also a bit sizable. And uh, the keys here are actually from the impact project as we needed them. And we always got requests to add new characters and so on. And then you, we just add them. But it's also possible to just enter here the uh, Unicode data point and then you get whatever you want. If the font, of course, contains it, otherwise it would just show the box. But it's still there, so the data is still there, but you can't see it at the moment. And yeah, you can also define your own keyboard layouts. For instance, you can switch to ligatures now, that's, so it's easier. If you know what you have as characters, you can also narrow it down and you don't have to search all the time. And yeah, what else? So we can show also, switch back to this. Oh. There it is. Um, yeah, we can show the text as overlay, which is especially useful if you want to correct existing text, which was produced from an OCR engine or something. 
then you can see the region and text next to each other and uh, quickly spot arrows and correct them in the, the editor. And yeah, that's as well some tools to find something. I don't know. Go to another region and search for something. So if I want to find now a region with the word farm, because someone told me there's something wrong with farm somewhere, and I can just find it, it selects it for you and shows you also where it is the region. So, yeah. so text entry, also of course the same for text lines, words and glyphs. Usually you would only have this information on one level, but in some scenarios you need it on all levels, then we also have some tools to propagate the text easily, you don't have to type it again, just from the regions you know, okay, there are so many text lines and it just spreads from the text you entered for the region, it also spreads it with the text lines, so it's also quite easy. Um, yeah. So, once you have everything done, let's say, uh, then you want maybe to check if there are some problems, maybe you forgot something or something is overlapping which shouldn't be. So if I create more, for instance, quickly something which is wrong, so that shouldn't be there. Then uh, we integrated this validation step, which is actually also available as a command line tool for batch processing. So if you get from a service provider or something, so and so many thousand ground roofs, you can actually process them and check them, which I mentioned before, and see what's wrong or if everything is fine. So this is also integrated in here for single pages. So you can, on the bottom, you can see all the checks you can do. So let's say it's just leave it like it is now and uh, validate. And then you get a result. Uh, you saw that before, and then you can actually also browse the result and see, okay, now uh, this one, for instance, yeah, it highlights a region which is a problem, and then you can see where the problem is and correct it quickly. And the same for all the other stuff. So, as some levels, so uh, if it's a node, it's not so bad, so maybe you can just ignore it, but if it's a warning, maybe you should actually check it. And arrows are as no, arrows now, but arrows you definitely have to correct, otherwise, it's wrong. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, some additional features now. Um, yeah, okay, there are some basic things like uh, metadata for documents, which might be generated automatically, or you can just enter some comments maybe, or uh, the creator information some ID, and, yeah, and you also have some information about the image resolution, for instance, and yeah, and like that, and then uh, some basic statistics about the text, so how many regions you have, and how many of them are text, and how many characters you have, and so on, it can be actually quite important for cost calculation, so uh, some service providers are, uh, yeah, charged, with, uh, charged by character, and so on, and then yeah, you need to know how many characters they actually typed or corrected or whatever. So you can get it from here. We also have a command line tool for that, so you don't have to open everything in Alethea now. But yeah, uh, something we integrated recently, which is actually quite useful to use, is let me just quickly delete this one. Uh, to have actually. Tesseract OCR engine integrated uh, to run OCR, let's say, on a single region. I can do it now. Let me just quickly convert it to a bounding box because it's easier for Tesseract. And you can just say OCR region and you select the language, which is, what is it? Dutch? Dutch? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Like which image you use now, background, Tesseract is called, it does all the stuff, and then you get the text content, which is quite okay in this case. Yeah. And 
not only that, if you start from scratch, you can also actually do the same for the whole page. So, yeah, let's say I'm doing now layout only because of otherwise it takes a while. Touch again, and then I delete all the rest I have for now. And then you actually get, it takes a little bit longer because it was newspaper now. It's not so bad. It has yeah, a few things wrong, the drop capital here, but it's not bad. And yeah, again you can just use that now to correct it if you if you need the ground roof and start selecting things and merge them to one region for instance like that. Or you can split things easily. Just draw a line and then split it. And then you can correct the types and whatever I, I showed you before. So it's actually quite useful and uh, we also work together with some uh, partners in the US now and uh, they also find it quite useful to create actually character ground proof which they use then for training. It has worked again in this case for different font and the layouts. So yeah, in this case you don't need any fine reader pre-produced, you can just use what's integrated already. Okay. Uh, did you send the color image to Tesseract? I did now send the color image, yeah. So I could also have used the binary image in this case. Yeah. But the uh, performance is the same. Maybe we should, should add that, uh, you know, uh, for, for our image repository for research purposes within the project, right? Mm -hmm. we, we also want to have the color images, right? For production, it's the binarized images, but uh, you know, for our research we also would like to have color, maybe grayscale, whatever the libraries have, right? And work and not maybe maybe to, to make a point, right, that the, the binarization using that method uh, wouldn't have been the best decision also. So. <clears throat> and also maybe another word, uh, the data set before obviously um, that's within the project, right? So is the li uh, library partners shouldn't get worried now that we are giving that out, you know, to download images just this for using within the project and to run experiments to improve the workflows and all that. So we want to have the capability to work on color but also on Okay. <coughs> okay. So once we have the run truth, uh, as Jeff I mentioned, you might be interested in actually using this to measure the performance of some method, let's say Pine Reader or Tesseract or whatever you use to measure the results of those methods and for that uh, we have the evaluation tool which is which looks at first glance a bit similar to Alifia but it actually has both now, the ground roof as you see now but you can also see if you load it, uh, the result in this case, uh, it's a pine needle result. Hmm. And from that already, you can start comparing now with, if you want to, uh, you can just switch between them or have both at the same time. You can see maybe some properties already from that. But more interesting is to actually automatically evaluate what finally produced. And for that, you can just select what Stefan mentioned before. For a specific scenario, just select the profile, which has some weights going a bit more in one or other direction of evaluation. Using the same tool, though, but different weights. And if I do that now for just normal text recognition scenario for regions, because we only have regions then you would get a result like that. So you get an overlay which shows you regions with problems. So in that case it's 
actually there's also green, which is not visible now because there's no green, but so it doesn't mean all the regions have a big problem, but they definitely have a, a, some kind of problem. So you can also see if the color codes, what kind of problem is already. You can also browse through the different arrows, which were mentioned before, so you can have regions which were merged or split, in this case, by the segmentation, by the final result, in this case. And, yeah. But to see the actual details per region, you can, yeah, it's a bit not good resolution from the projector here, but I try to show most of it now. So you can actually browse in a tree-like structure here all the, the arrows that there are, and you, maybe you can just see what, okay, there was a region missed, then you can just click it and just check. It should select it, but it's probably somewhere, ah, uh, this one here. So now we know this one was missed, and so on, and you can also see how big the actually area was of the region, which is very important because you don't want to to weigh every region with the same amount of penalty uh, because if it's just a small region maybe it's not so bad for the overall result. So we also use actually the area of each region, the foreground area to be precise, uh, as a specific weight again. And yeah, if you can browse through now, you can also see some statistics, so how many uh, regions there are overall in the ground roof and the results. You can see final years tending to almost, not almost, more than double the actual regions. So it's more prone to split in this case. And to see the actual performance now. Okay, it's a bit much information at once, but uh, that's why we added some color here. So basically, that's of those two is the absolute one number performance in percent for a fine reader for this page now. So it's actually quite good, even though it looked a bit worse in the, in the color coding, but usually it's, if you zoom in a bit now, you see it's only a few pixels missed at some character or something. So it, in the end, still it's a good result. So it's, that's why it's always good to have both the, the actual image view and also the detailed results and then you can also check what actually were the most errors. So you can see here from this misclassification could check now in detail. So in this case misclassification was the biggest problem. And that's actually useful then you also know what is going wrong in fine reader if you can if you have the possibility to change some settings for fine reader or for whatever you're using, right? You could then browse into detail what's going wrong, where it's going wrong, and maybe find better setting to get better results in the end. Um, yeah. So, okay, I uh, skipped it now. I could do the same now with a different profile, but it just would we'll show different, different numbers and maybe not so very interesting. But, which is actually interesting, which I have a slide for. Is oh, I change the color somehow. <laughs> okay, maybe. It wasn't white. Oops. Let me quickly change it. Back. <laughs> So, uh, so what we see here is basically what we had before for this one page. Um, so also with Tesseract now, and the one the text recognition scenario which I used before, so it's the same number as before, as you see. So for the text recognition, actually they are both, so Epi, Fine Reader and Tesseract are both rather close, but uh, Fine Reader wins in this case. But, which is interesting to see here now, if you change, if you change the scenario, change the profile we use, you're not actually changing the evaluation method, it's just changing a few settings for the evaluation. You see it, it's completely turned around. So, 
as you can see from that, it's very important. You know what you want, select this, the correct scenario for that. Otherwise, you may get results from the, from the evaluation you, you don't need or which are useless for you in this case. And uh, the same is actually, we saw we will have a competition, or we, or we had a competition for the upcoming ICTA conference this year. And uh, I don't want to <laughs> spoil the results, so I just showed Tesseract and FineReader and all the others were participating institutions which delivered their results for some uh, data set of, in this case for newspapers, was uh, 50 newspaper pages. And again, it's a specific scenario, in this case segmentation, you are only interested in the regions, not in the actually type of regions, just where they are, and that they are properly separated from the background. And if we switch now to a different scenario, which we did for the competition, which is more OCR targeted or focused, and you can see if I switch back, that actually in this case a different method wins, um, which was actually quite uh, difficult for us to decide then who the overall winner is of this competition because it was the same competition with two different scenarios, so we had to do some calculating for that. Um, to come to the reading order again, as uh, Stefan showed you a few slides before, there are actually two things which are interesting if you have reading order. So you can, as Stefan mentioned before, if you know the reading order from the ground roof, you know that this paragraph is before the uh, next paragraph. And in this case, you can ignore some merge, merge hours, for instance, or split hours. So you can use the reading order for this kind of information and then change the evaluation so that it's that, that, that not penalized, basically. So which is a one useful thing, but you can also compare the reading order itself if the, the method has the ability to uh, yeah, deliver a reading order in this format. So we have, uh, for instance, for Tesla and Fine Reader, we have tools which can export the reading order in also in page format. So we could compare that. And there will also be a publication in the, on ICTA on that. So you can see from that now. So it is a data set of, I can't remember now, a few dozen pages. And with different complexity. So you have single column book pages, which is the second second group of bars. And uh, two column, I think, scientific articles, it was, some magazine pages and the newspapers. And you can see from that, uh, the different methods, so it's fine with the Tesseract again. Uh, the more complex the layout is, the more difficult it is for them to get the right reading order, which is, makes sense. But uh, you also see from that there is still a need for research in this, in this field to make, especially for newspapers, as you can see, is, uh, if you go from this measure now, 50% is definitely, or 60% for fine reader is probably not very useful as a result if you want to have some article tracking or to find which paragraphs belong to what article and so on. And, yeah, I don't think it makes sense to show it in a tool because it's, again, just just numbers. Mm. Yeah, what I want to mention is also how you actually get uh, to such an, what we call profile for an evaluation scenario. So what I just selected before, you can actually define in this tool. So we have this profile editor, and that basically has weights, many weights actually, which are fortunately grouped into in a hierarchy, so you don't have to go into all the detail if you don't need to. So you can just say, okay, I want to have merge errors penalized at some weight, so it goes in our case from zero to 10, so you can change the ways as you need them, and then save this profile for later and then, for, and then use it 
for the future. Of course, uh, once you have a profile, maybe you shouldn't change it in the, in the middle of evaluating because then you, you couldn't compare the results anymore. So it's, it makes sense to think about exactly, maybe it should, be, I guess it's more expert work, create a profile, you actually should know what you're doing, and then you can keep using it. Yeah, so uh, as I said, yeah, you can basically select which types of regions are interesting for you. So if you are not interested in in image, you can, uh, as it is here, you can just set it to zero, then it's ignored completely in the evaluation. Same for all the other region types we, we have defined in our format. So, and if you are really good in what you're doing, you can also go into much more detail. You can also say, define, okay, how much penalty is it if a method uh, merges an image with text, for instance, which in some scenarios can be bad, in some uh, maybe not. So you can go into a very high detail. You can even go to the sub-type details. You can say, what happens if I merge a caption with an image or something, right? So. As you can see, there's a lot of depth, but you can also stay on the top level and don't care about the details in the subtypes, for instance. Yes, okay. Okay, so one last thing <coughs> to show. Is, uh, so that was a layout evaluation, so it's only for the for the regions and so on. Also text lines is supported, and words and those also. But uh, what Stefan also mentioned before, for the actual text performance evaluation, we have... We don't have a graphical tool, so I can just quickly show you what the results would be when I run that here. So maybe we don't have to wait, but... Yeah, let's just run. So maybe if you can all follow this now. <laughs> no. So while this is running, I just show you what is happening in the background. So what we do now is we start from uh, ground truth and uh, result, let's say again from final reader, in the page format, which Stefan mentioned before. So it's an XML format with all the regions and the text content and so on. And in this case, we added a step to uh, normalize the characters of the text, which uh, Stefan mentioned before, you can have, let's say, the, the long S or some ligatures. And that to compare this with the results of Fine Reader can be tricky because, let's say, Fine Reader doesn't support it and always returns the normal S. Then you want maybe still, because you don't care about the S, you still want to compare the results. And for that, we added the step of character normalization. You can say, okay, all long S's are converted to a normal S, or all ligatures are converted to the counterpart, to characters or three characters or whatever. And then you can actually compare them also with the final result because this one just has a plain text and not much and not many special characters. So that's again the result is still a page format, so that doesn't change in this case, just the text is normalized. And then we actually extract the text into a plain text file. Uh, so this is uh, done uh, is, even though in this scenario I chose here for the back of words, it's not important that it is in a specific order, but we use the reading order which is defined, if there is reading order defined, to actually serialize the text into the text file. So if both had, would have the reading order, it would be comparable also as full text. But in this case now, let's say for, uh, if you only want the keywords, or search for keywords later, it's enough to just get the words, all the words, from the text file and into this, what we call, or what is called, the back of words. So it's just, it doesn't have to be ordered or something, so it's just all the words of this text serialized. You can optionally uh, 
remove or ignore the stop words so like V or A or something from a specific, a specific language, so you have to select a language for that. And then, yeah, basically the two bags of words are then just compared. So uh, the ground truth is this word, does the result also have that? If yes, it's fine. If not, okay, it's a miss. But also if the result, fine reader, adds some words which were not in the ground proof, then it's a basically false detection again. Same as we had for the layout before, so we have those two kind of errors which are then combined, combined to one yeah, su success rate, basically, so you can compare them. And yeah, still running. <coughs> Yeah, while it's still running, I can show you uh, what happened in a different uh, competition we had, uh, we will have for ICTA this year, which was for historical book recognition, again for layout, but also we added this time a challenge for text recognition, which was not really successful in terms of uh, participants, as you can see. It's just the state-of-the-art methods which we provided and only one participant actually delivered the, the text and uh, you, you can see that this is a, still a big problem to deliver a whole workflow in this case. So everybody delivered for the layout evaluation but for the text and also as you can see the results are not really promising. So as it is for research, there's still a lot of to, to do for to deliver also the text in this case. So, but uh, maybe interesting also to point out for fine read and Tesseract, so there are definitely uh, differences also in languages. So we had four different languages in this uh, scenario and even though, yeah, they basically we told fine read and Tesseract what languages there are, and they basically select them themselves the methods, what is the best language. But still there are, as you can see, considerable differences in the language. So English, it's no surprise, is always the best, best results. But yeah, different differing here now Tesseract is burst with Spanish for instance for instance and whereas uh, Fine Reader is burst with, with German, which could also, could also be because it was old German. But yeah. So it's uh, certainly different from the language as well. So this is done now. And yeah, what the tools return is basically just a camera separated table with all the detailed success rates and error rates and statistics. And to make sense of, out of that, of course, there could be an automated process. We don't have it now. We could just, as our pre producer, just copy it into a table and then get some chart. So in this case, as was always the okay, case, so almost a uh, final reader again wins. And yeah, there's not much to show actually now, it's just, <laughs> just uh, to see something now. Okay, um, maybe the last thing to mention now is here, you can also see them the text files which were produced, in this case with the ground proof. And let's say Tesseract, just to see, okay, it looks quite okay, but yeah, you can also, could also compare the, the full text now with our tools, but I just wanted to show the one scenario now. Okay, so what's the time? This one says one o'clock. Two o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay, any questions? <laughs>